Judy, you just published a book. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> right, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> so the other side of the surface and other stories. Tell us about that cover. Well, the cover is an illustration from a story that James Blish wrote called Surface Tension, in which the, a, a planet is being colonized in a project where they're altering human beings to live in different conditions. And this planet is full of puddles. So they alter the human beings to be microscopic sized and they plant a ship full of colonists in a puddle. Huh. Okay. Okay. So they meet all kinds of creatures which are familiar to most people who have looked through a microscope at a puddle which is hardly anybody. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> I did, though, when I was a kid. I, I really was fascinated by them. They're gorgeous. But by the time you were a kid, he'd written the story. True, and that's what inspired me to look. So, yes, so, go ahead. When I was a kid, we, we had one microscope among 30 children, and everything on it was dead. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, much more boring. And, and all you got was slides with pictures of paramecians on them. It was not very interesting. So the story is, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Okay, you are welcome to sneeze. It's <laughs> the, the, uh, the story is about, James's story was about the colonists and the terrible time they had with all the critters. And he knew about them because he had studied that biology in university very carefully. And I, I like the story very much. Everybody likes the story, it's, it's great. However, after he died, I took the microscope and I went out in the garden and I never done this before. And I took some water out of the garden and I looked into the microscope and I saw them running around in there, all of them. And I spent weeks, months hanging over that microscope and observing the various animals, identifying the ones that he had and watching what they did. And the more I watched them, the more I felt he, I had got them wrong. <laughs> he had uh, chosen to characterize paramecium as a kind of wise helper, shy wise helper, but that was not what I was seeing it doing. And he characterized the rotifers as eaters who were dire enemies. And I watched them and fell in love with them. They were beautiful and complex and interesting and not all that aggressive. And I thought somebody has to tell me what, what they were seeing when these colonists arrived and began shooting at them. So, so I want to say a few things about that. One is that what people liked about that story was the idea that humans would be in a very strange environment and have to cope and what they would do to cope and what they did do to cope is fascinating. Uh, and the other thing is they could have been alien rotifers and alien paramecia. But anyway, coming back to your story, which which I do love very much and and which makes points about human behavior as well as animal behavior, which I also love. Well, the uh, well, yeah, main point of view in his story was male colonists and we know about them and the male the, the male main point of view in my story was female colonized and we know about them and they're quite different yes indeed yes exactly and that's why this the two make such a good pair so both the stories are in the book you've got james blish's story as an appendix and you've got your story as the lead story of the book so it's kind of a historic moment so anyway, well, we had to include his story because people get very lost trying to read my story cold. And I followed his story completely from one end to the other. Each event in the story is described from the other point of view. With a few little additions here and then. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a challenge. Yes, but, yes, I bet that too. But, Plus, but interesting. for you, he, he was inhabiting a human point of view and seeing it from a human point of view. That was the, 
the orienting idea of the story, yours inhabits a very alien point of view because the rotifer is the protagonist or the rotifer, <laughs> the rotifers, both. Well, the <laughs> I, yes, all of us. Yes. So, well, Jim, so, Jim had given me a present by putting it in that they were somewhat telepathic. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That was extremely useful. Yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It means the consciousness so, is, is a group consciousness, not just individuals, but not for the people. The people didn't have that. Right, 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 right. Yes. Yeah. So for you, the leap was to imagine as a colonized people who are not human and don't have human reactions and don't even think or communicate like humans, how would they respond to being colonized? It's that a lot was of the fun. challenge, yeah. And how would they see it? Mm -hmm. And what would surprise them? And what uh -huh. would they be expecting? And That's what I love the most about science fiction in general, is it challenges us to see things from new perspectives. It's one of my hobbies is to write stories from points of view that would not occur to anybody. Such I have a, a story about a, from the point of view of a termite, <laughs> um, which was a challenge too, trying to figure out what it would be like to be a termite and how you might consider the universe. And of course, the, this poor termite had to become an individual because there was no way to write it from the collective point of view. But the, that was that was another part of the story was how to, how to become an individual when you there's your your group that you identify with isn't yes yes yeah and the challenge of that one was that somebody said they wanted a happy end of the world story and I, all I did was ask him, does it have to be happy for people or can we have somebody else being happy? And they agreed it could be someone else, so we did that. And I, I, a lot of my stories are investigating what it is like to be something that is nothing like anything we know. And how do we perceive each other? How do we perceive our function? How do we perceive what we're doing here if we're not human? We have enough trouble when we are human. <laughs> yeah and oh, sometimes you go completely uh tongue in cheek you play with the the, Me? the <laughs> yes you yes you <laughs> judith ann lawrence yes you do <laughs> never <laughs> so tell us about the screwdriver <laughs> stories because those are also a lot of fun and and between the very serious deep philosophical and and behavioral investigations of some of your stories there are some really funny satires so tell us about the screwdriver stories well yeah but there's a lot more of my stories are humorous than not um the, the screwdriver stories were sort of take off on star trek with a starship that has a captain who is apparently female and possibly human with a very motley crew that is can be absolutely anything. The planetologist is a piece of string <laughs> that she can tie around her finger if she's exploring someplace and send him down little holes to see what's going on. And the, the basic premise is that something something has gone wrong in a planet. And this little ship that she has is called the screwdriver. And it travels around the galaxies making repairs. And every problem that it meets is absolutely ridiculous, silly. And then she has to say, think out a solution for it, which is matchingly silly, and have a love affair with something unusual, <laughs> as she goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what that, that is about. And it, it's, uh, it's absurd, but it's, it's you know, Star Trek kind of turned inside out. Which, which is so much fun, so much fun. And then there's a last piece of the book, which are not science fiction stories. There's a uh, story set in Eastern Europe and in Greece and even some children's stories. 
Mm -hmm. you want to say about those? Well, the, the stories about Greece are, I think they're true, all of them. Uh, yeah, they, they were all true, one way or another. And yet, fantastic. And the, uh, which, which other ones were you talking about? The children's stories. Well, yes. those are, those are the fantasy stories, for goodness sake. I mean, the, the pee, pee monster is an invention. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, there are there was and there were some stories that are just uh, extraordinary love stories. Yes, true. Yes, there's some really fascinating love stories in there. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, Sometimes from the loved one's story, and sometimes from the lover's story, a viewpoint, and sometimes from the other viewpoint. They don't always match. Yes, yes, which makes for a much more interesting story, even if not truthful. a very satisfying truthful. love affair. What? More truthful. More truthful, that too. That too, yeah. Yeah. So, congratulations again. I'm Thank so you. excited. I love every story in here. There's some I particularly love. And one of my favorites is The Other Side of the Surface. So it's, a, it's an awesome collection. Thank you for writing it. Thank you for saying that. I hope, I hope lots of people like it and will have fun reading it at the beach in the summer and stuff. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs>